always the cheerleader of my dreams. The scene to only take the head of football teams. And I was the class clown that always kept you laughing. We were never meant to be.
Hi, my name is Kathy. And Susan and I, Heather's mother, Susan and I, have been best friends for quite a while, and we are so close that we call each other sisters. So I've been asked to welcome each and every one of you here today. We are here to remember Heather higher and to say goodbye. Some of us are here as family. Some of us are friends, old and new. Some are co-workers, but that's more like family to Heather. And some of us are just here out of respect for a young woman who lost her life defending the rights of people. And I would like for us to carry her legacy on by doing the same thing, respecting the rights of everyone. We want, the family is humbled and deeply grateful for the outreach and the outpouring of love from the community and generosity. We especially need to thank the JF Bell Funeral Services, the Paramount, the Space Downtown, Amazon, Albemarle Limousine, and the police department who have kept us all secure today. At this time, I would Elwood Schrader, Heather's grandfather, is going to share some remembrances. I'd like to repeat that we thank you for coming. We're absolutely in awe at this outpouring of affection. Let me hurry on to say that I'm here to speak of Heather's childhood. For I knew her quite well. She lived in our home for some years and in her younger years. I've rocked her to sleep many times and sometimes we went to sleep together in the chair. I sang to her. I made up little songs at times. I wish I had some of those recorded. They were truly silly, but it didn't matter to Heather. She loved them. I've read to her many, many times. I've listened to tapes with her. We were close. And she, like her brother, loved to be carried in a backpack. Oh, what exuberance in that backpack. Little legs flailing. Many times she knocked off my hat or pushed it down over my eyes. I'll never forget those times. <laughs> she could reach around and get your hat and swing it and wave it. And I think she experimented with Newton's law of gravity quite often. <laughs> we had a good time with that. Nick before her had loved that backpack. So we walked a good bit. She showed her passion at an early age. You didn't know her as a child, most of you. You only knew her as an adult and saw the passion in her. But at an early age, she could call out something that didn't seem right to her. As a taught in nursery school one time, my wife was asked to go pick up Heather that evening because Susan had to work late. And when she showed up, the, the attendant, the one taking care of her, said, Heather, your grandma's here. Heather stamped her foot, got indignant, and that little tot went tottering across the floor. She said, she's not a grandma. Grandma's walked like this. She's <laughs> Nana. And <laughs> Nana she was, too. She called me granddaddy but the way she said it then I'll never forget and we teased about it I was granddaddy sometimes I signed cards to her that way down through the years just for a laugh 
In earlier years, she wanted fairness. She wanted justice. She wanted everybody to get equal respect. And with an older brother, that got tough because older brothers are going to get more privileges, you see. And she watched that like a hawk. And she'd call you out, why can't I do that? Why can't, why can't I have that privilege? Why can't, why does he get to do it? And we had a lot of fiery discussions. And she, she wanted to understand your viewpoint. It didn't seem right to her, but she insisted on knowing your viewpoint. And I think you saw some of that. So we talked and we discussed and we had many questions and answers, but sometimes I couldn't come up with answers. She was, she was pretty sharp. How ironic that she ended up in a law office of all things. <laughs> Discussion with passion, hands waving. If you knew Heather well, you knew that she couldn't talk without both hands in motion. It was an it was an adventure to see her come home from school and tell you about the day's happenings. In fact, it got so animated that we four would quit eating so often and watch her as she stood up at the corner of the dining room table, waving hands and almost dancing as she told you something that happened that day. She loved life. She was entertaining to watch as she grew up. You never knew what was coming next. Yes, that same drive, that same passion, that same desire for justice, I think we saw it all through her life. She wanted respect for everybody. In our family, all lives matter. And she absorbed that quite well, as did her mother before her and her brother. And she realized we all need forgiveness and we all must extend forgiveness. As we think about her today, we're very proud of her. I'm proud of our whole family. My wife and I are very proud of Susan, Nick, and Heather. As I think about this, I think of Trevi's song and Fiddler on the Roof. The little girl, is this the little girl I carried? Yes, I think so. That same passion was beyond childhood. That same passion, that same girl, you've met her. You who knew her as an adult, you know her too. She was a lady of happiness and great joy and realize that all lives matter. Let me, let me again say how much we appreciate what this whole community has done for us. You are truly honoring Heather and our family. My wife and I deeply appreciate that. Bless you. Next is Mark Heyer, Heather's father.
No father should have to do this. But I love my daughter. And as I look at on you guys, you loved her too. She was kind of hard that way. She's hard not to love. I want to tell a short story of when she was about nine. I came from Louisiana. Her mom came from Virginia. And my folks came up from Florida. And we went to a cabin and we spent a few days together. And the evening was about to get a little chilly. And her mom told her to put a sweater on because we were going to the pool. Well, actually, I kind of agreed with Heather. She didn't want to put, she didn't want to put the sweater on. But she defied her mom, and her mom said, we're not going to the pool unless you put the sweater on. Well, for the next two hours, <laughs> Heather decided that she knew better at nine and defied her mom. Well, the only thing I could do was go sit in the room with her. I couldn't cross her mom. And to this day, I don't remember how that turned out, but <laughs> I, I don't really remember. All I remember is Heather's passion. Heather's passion extended to her ideas, her thoughts. Her, her grandfather was right. She she could tell if somebody wasn't being straight, and she'd call you on it. And like a father and daughter relationship, we don't always agree. And Susan expressed to me that, yeah, along with me and everybody else, she would argue if she thought it was appropriate. Even if she didn't think it was appropriate, she would tell you what she thought. <laughs> and as I listened and to her friends, And hear stories of my daughter and the way she was. She loved people. She wanted equality. And in this issue of the day of her passing, she wanted to put down hate. And for my part, we just need to stop all this stuff and just forgive each other. I think that's what the Lord would want us to do, is to stop, just love one another. I came here today and I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed at the rainbow of colors in this room. That's how Heather was. It didn't matter who you were or where you were from. If she loved you, that was it. You were stuck. So, for that, I'm truly proud of my daughter. Um, that's as far as I've gotten. Uh, next will be Reverend Harold Bear. Relax, it's not a sermon. <laughs> it is true that I am a pastor. I do not typically go by the title of reverend. I go by the title of pastor normally. There are two purposes for memorial service. First is to appreciate and to cherish memories of a loved one. And the second is for us to consider the value of such occasions as this, what value is added to us for the journey that remains for our individual lives? Matthew 6 and 9, the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray that we may know how to live on earth and prepare for eternity. And Jesus answered, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it is this prayer 
that we would pray would be affected in our hearts today, here, that we may know how to live on earth. Now, context is important. As I have said, I am a pastor. I'm one of the senior pastors in terms of tenure in the city. One of the other speakers and I, Dr. Alvin Edwards, we have both been here 36 years each. Heather visited Covenant Church several times, which is the reason why her mother Susan asked that I speak today. And I said, Susan, please give me some boundaries. She said, speak about diversity. So if you allow me, I will share with you in context my comments of what Heather saw at Covenant Church and what has transpired in 36 years and why I would talk about diversity in the way that I shall do so. My role in this community came about as I became a graduate student, a doctoral graduate student at the University of Virginia in sociology. And much was I surprised to find that upon completing residency, we were to become pastors. Our congregation was a modest size, one color, totally, absolutely. I came to the conclusion, being a sociologist, after my studies that Jesus was the greatest sociologist of all times. He understood social movements, small groups, cultures, and diversity like no one else. In fact, the Sermon on the Mount is the finest piece of literature covering known history until the time of Jesus to summarize social issues. So my decision was as a pastor to implement the teachings of Jesus. So we established certain principles that I hold dear and that we hold dear and what Heather would have experienced in coming to covenant. All humanity is family created by God. In fact, Romans 14 and seven says no man is created or made by himself and no man dies to himself. Such a testimony today that Heather's passing is acknowledged not just by you, but by millions and millions of people around the world. Two, all life is equally valuable, regardless of race, culture, color, or social class. Ezekiel 18 and 4, behold, all souls are mine, saith God. Three, when hearing a matter, be sure you wait to hear the other side before you make a decision. And that is Proverbs 18 and 17. Four, if you have a problem with someone, first go to them before telling anyone else. That's Matthew 18, 15. Now the believe in everyone, believe the best in everyone. And that's Matthew 6. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, keeping the beam out of our own eye before we criticize others. Six, Remember that the cross is common ground where our rights are surrendered to serve God and others. So the journey of 36 years brings us to a present moment where 76 national flags hang in our sanctuary and more than 20 nations gather on a Sunday morning. I do not know the total number of tribes that attend Covenant Church. One nation did have five different tribes attending at the same time. Now, this is the diversity that Heather saw. Can you imagine a person, if I speak about diversity, and this is what you might hear me say from the pulpit on a Sunday morning at Covenant Church. Can you imagine a person in our city going to the University of Virginia Hospital or Martha Jefferson, both of which I consider to be world-class medical facilities, and needing plasma or a heart transplant and saying, and who is the donor? Can you imagine having a brain tumor and getting to the hospital and saying, uh, excuse me, I want to know who the doctors are, the color, and the culture. If you had a brain tumor, I think you would say, who's the best doctor? <laughs> Who is the best doctor in the house? Jesus practiced diversity. He chose a motley crew of disciples, extremely different in personality, giftedness, and skills. Yet he molded them into a formidable force that changed the world. 
Now, my prayer is that this moment of sadness may bring us to a higher appreciation of our need for each other. And may the God who made us transform us into servants with humility to not only give of our best to the master, but to each other. May diversity be defined in relation to Jesus and his teaching. And as for me and my house, our best service to you and our city, our nation and our world is to share the love of Jesus with others, regardless of whether they look, talk, dress, act, or eat what we do. Covenant Church is one of the most aggressive churches in the community in working with refugees. So I would say to you, to the family, first of all, Susan, thank you for allowing me to share. Second, I would hope that you would absolutely, with all the energy that's within you, appreciate the diversity of mankind and that you would do everything you can do to make peace. And thank you so much for allowing me to share about Heather's experience with diversity at Covenant Church. Denise Ratcliffe Kennedy, a cousin, now comes to speak. I picked a poem to adapt for today. The original poem is We Remember Them by Sylvan Kamins and Rabbi Jack Reimer. At the rising sun and its going down, we remember Heather. At the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter, we remember her. At the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember her. At the blueness of the skies and in the warmth of the summer, we remember her. At the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of the autumn, we remember her. At the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember her. As long as we live, Heather too will live. She, for she is now a part of us, we remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember her. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember her. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember her. When we have joy we crave to share, we remember her. When we have achievements that are based on hers, we remember her. For as long as we live, she too will live, for Heather is now a part of us as we remember her. May our memories of Heather be a comfort to us all. Diana Ratcliffe will be next. I'm going to be sharing a letter that I wrote to Heather about all the things that I wish I would have said before today. <clears throat> Dear Heather, did I ever tell you about my earliest memory of you? Just an image of you, a whirling dervish of bouncy brown curls in Mama and Papa's kitchen? Did I tell you that your smile was infectious and that your eyes glittered and laughed? Did I tell you that you come from a long line of stubborn and passionate women? The qualities of a toddler that would drive any parent crazy, but those qualities turned you into an independent and compassionate woman. Your compassion. Did I ever tell you how much I admired the woman you became? You always saw the good in other people. People I would have cut out of my life, but you refused to give up on them. Your patience was heroic. Your courage. You never had a problem having the conversation or saying what needed to be said, even when it was uncomfortable. Your conviction, you didn't let other people tell you how to think, how to feel, how to behave. Did I ever tell you how much you taught me that you don't have to be a world leader, Nobel Prize winner, or CEO to change the world? Just be one person 
willing to show compassion to another. Did I ever tell you how much I loved you? Heather, when my children ask me who I admire most, I will tell them you, my baby cousin, who is larger than life and too good for this world. You are in a better place now where there is no pain, no sadness, no hunger, and no hate. You might not be with us anymore, but you will always be in our hearts. Love always, Diana. I'd like to introduce uh, Veda Khatib Wilson, a friend of Heather's. I am normally not one to speak in front of a group of people, um, but I, today I felt like I owed it to Heather. Um, Heather was a wonderful person. Um, she was not just a coworker, she was a friend. I just wanted to share a few moments that we had together. Um, I worked in the office with Heather and uh, Everyone that knows Heather knows she is not a morning person. That was like her worst thing. And she would come in in the morning and I'd be like, good morning, Heather. And mind you, she comes in at 10. So um, <laughs> she'd go straight and get her coffee because that was really important. We all wanted Heather to have her coffee. Um, but she just is a wonderful, was a wonderful soul. She would get to work and stay after coming on the weekends, we all admired her commitment to her job, just to life in general. She um, was a real person, and everyone that knows her knows that she cursed like a sailor sometimes. Um, and my office is right outside the printer, and I could hear her going off and something was jammed or something didn't print out and, and she'd look at me and she'd like, sorry. And I was like, that's fine. <laughs> but she it was an everyday thing. Her and that printer just were enemies. Um, we will all continue to have sleepless nights and our pain will eventually fade away. But our memory of Heather will forever live on. And I just wrote a little something that I wanted to share. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Heather, that it ended this way, that terrible, horrible Saturday. That devastating phone call that we didn't want to believe was true and the aches in our heart of hearing what happened to you. There must have been a mistake I kept on saying to myself as I entered the doors at UVA and the numbness in my body and the words that I couldn't speak standing there listening but not actually hearing, the inner child of me crying but my adult self fearing. How could this happen, happen like in the world today? After all those marches that ended in violence and all those verdicts that ended in rage and all the hate crimes that go unsolved, when is this so-called change ever gonna change? So I'm so sorry, Heather, sorry that you cared so much. Maybe if you didn't stand up or you didn't speak so loudly, maybe if you weren't so bold that you, they wouldn't have heard you and you would still be here. Now your desk will be empty and your coffee cup will leave, it'll sit there untouched. Folder on top of folder, but your fingers will never flip those pages and you will not utter a single name. It will never be the same. But I want to thank you, Heather, for all your passion, for all of your talks, for all of your smiles, for believing that this world can change and trying to make that happen. Thank you for making the world, the word hate, real. 
but thank you for making the word love even stronger. Thank you. Well, hello everyone, I'm, I'm Alfred Wilson. Um, I was Heather's supervisor, but um, most of all, I ended up becoming a stronger feeling. She was my close friend. Um, quite often, she and I used to joke um, because I would say she was my office wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say that because a lot of people would tell you in the office, and she even told my own wife and my own kids that she hated me sometimes. <laughs> um, but our beginning um, was kind of interesting and very humble in a way because um, Heather first came to our office five years ago. And when I sat down to interview her, um, as I was talking to her, you know, she looked around the office and she pointed out to me, hey, I just have a high school degree. I'm just a waitress. I've never worked in the office before. She's like, I don't know how to type, um, but I'll do my best. And I asked her how does she do with her tips. And she told me she did really well with her tips, actually. Um, I asked her to tell me a story about um, one of the customers that come in. And she told me about a story where one of the customers came in and she listened to him. So as I listened to her talk to me, I said, you need to come work for me. She said, but I don't know anything about the legal system. I don't know anything about bankruptcy. I said, well, that's what I'm here for. So she came and worked for us. And did she ever come and work for us? I mean, Heather basically just sat back and just became the sponge. Everything that I would tell her or talk to her about with the bankruptcy code, she absorbed it. She went to classes that I sent her to. She studied it on her own. But the most amazing part of it was just watching her interact with clients. And that was the piece that I basically was seeing when I looked at her in the interview. She cared about everyone she spoke to. She listened to everyone she spoke to. And she took at heart everything that they had to say. Um, one time I was just passing by her desk and she was talking to a client, and it was kind of interesting because the client um, worked at UVA, was a professor. The wife worked at UVA Hospital. So both of them probably made four or five times more than Heather. And they both were kind of embarrassed about what was going on, that they were having to come to her to file bankruptcy. And she held their hand and said, well, Alfred always tells me to remember one of us could be on the other side of the table, so I could easily be you interviewing me. So it didn't bother her that, yeah, they were professors. It was Heather. Heather, she, she was an amazing woman. Um, all too often, um, my wife and I would say our youngest daughter reminded us of Heather, because my youngest daughter Oh my God, she makes me feel like choking myself sometimes. But <laughs> she, <laughs> but that's that was that's Heather as well. But I mean, <laughs> she would talk back to me, talking about my youngest daughter and Heather. <laughs> um, when I would say yes, Heather would say no, and my youngest daughter would do the same. When I would think I had the right answer. Heather would give me a different answer, and my youngest daughter would do the same thing. But the thing is, Heather would always have that fight and that compassion in her. And those times that I was upset and was working late because I was bothered by something that happened in court or with a trustee, guess who stayed late with me? Heather. She would 
come in there and give me a hug and see if there's something she could do. <laughs> Maybe nothing she could do because she knew nothing about what I did on the, what we call the back end of the process. But she would be there. Um, I want to tell you a, a little story that happened one time that this probably about two years ago. Um, Heather had a friend she was seeing, and she, I knew she had been seeing him for a little while. And one night, Heather and I had worked late, probably about to 8, 8.30, and we were walking out of the office. Um, as we walked out, I said bye. Her friend was sitting out there waiting for her. Um, and then I come the next day, you know, Heather was kind of a little upset. And I was wondering what was wrong, and she said her and her friend got in an argument. And I was like, what's wrong? And she said, well, when you came out the office, my friend saw you. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I told her that him that you were my boss, and he was like, you never told me you worked for a black man. And he was like, what difference does that make? And she, um, basically she sat there and told me she didn't have a, a friend anymore because she broke up with him. Because it was more important for her that she basically, somebody she knew that would stand by her, me, and didn't care who she was. I didn't care that she had only a high school degree, but she cared enough about me as a person that she stood up for, even in her own personal relationship. It took a lot of strength for her to do something like that. I mean, as far as she knows, the next day I could have decided to fire her. Now she didn't have a boyfriend and she didn't have a job. <laughs> but, but, um, Heather, she was always there for everyone. I mean, staff that came through the office, the ladies in the office, they had this unique bond. And that's one of the things, if any of you could ever come to our office, we were like family. All of us, after hours, would have, sit there and have a couple drinks. We would have laughs with each other. We hugged each other um, to, to sit and think at, you know, one of our, our staff that actually was there with Heather the day of the crash um, had watched her have a baby, <laughs> watching her kids grow up. Heather's watched my children grow up. And now she's going to have to look down from heaven and watch them. But I know <clears throat> Heather and I... <laughs> I told myself I wouldn't get upset, but this is not working. <laughs> but, um, I'm just proud of Heather. She, I mean, this woman came to me and was, she didn't believe that how good she was. She always constantly tried to remind me I'm just the waitress. And I was like, no, you're not a waitress. You are a paralegal. <laughs> you are damn good at your job so good that my email all week has been blowing up. I mean, it was all weekend. I kept getting these emails, and I just knew we didn't screw something up with court or something's going on, but it was actually people emailing. We had a guy come by the office yesterday, and I'm so used to people dropping in in our office, and they always tell us they got problems. And this guy just sat there, and he's waiting. And I'm like, okay, here's another problem on this day. And he came in there. He was a client three years ago, and he said when he heard about Heather, he and his wife wanted to come by just to express how important she was to them. She, he explained to me how Heather relaxed them, got them to understand what they were going through, and basically made them feel like it was a good decision. I mean, he took it out of his day, the middle of his day, to take off from work just to come there to tell us Heather was that important. I, I printed off like two emails that I wanted to read you guys because they just, and I asked these clients, could I read them to you? Um, Mr. Wilson, this message from Ashley, I would like to send our condolences to your firm. Heather was such a sweet person. Miss Heather, always kind, friendly, helpful in any way possible. She in my eyes is a hero, and hopefully all of this madness can stop. 
and hopefully we can make Heather smile. Thanks for your help, Mr. Wilson. Um, this one client sent um, this, and I actually ended up started crying at my computer. Said tonight, Mr. Wilson, my heart sunk and tears flowed. Casey and I worked with Heather when we came to your group to seek help for filing Chapter 13 bankruptcy in 2015. We felt hopeless when we arrived, but I remember Heather running your front office like a queen. She knew her work. She performed it well. Heather left a true impact on me and my husband. We were your clients. I can only imagine the pain and the sorrow that your office may be feeling this Monday morning. A true void, a senseless act of evil crime, an act of terrorism took Heather home. I'm so saddened for everyone that knew Heather, and I'm praying that the family and her friends and her workers will truly be able to heal from Heather. We'll miss her. Heather, I mean, like I said, Heather touched our clients every day. She was the one person in our office that touched every single file in our office. Not just one file, but every file had to come through Heather. They touched her hands, every single one of them. And as Heather would sit there and tell me when you, and she, she got what I was, was teaching her about, but if you really look at um, a file the right way, you can see what happens in a person's life. You see a whole bunch of credit card debt, and you see three kids, you know they cared about their kids and spent way too much money that they're supposed to. You've seen a whole lot of medical bills down there, you know that they had some kind of pain, something that happened, and Heather would be sympathetic to that. She would basically tell me that before I would even walk in there to see him. Alfred, this lady had breast cancer. You need to be mindful of that aspect of it. She cared about little things like that. I just, I, I, will, I pray and ask that our world somehow, some way, can sit here and, and feel that love that she had. I mean, she believed in each and every one of us. She saw the good in everyone. Even the times when she said she hated me, she would still turn around and come hug me within five minutes later. Um, I, just, I thank all of you for coming out here. Um, I've been truly blessed. And when I, when I say truly blessed, I've been truly blessed to, to know Heather. I've been truly blessed to know her mother. Um, her, her stepfather, Kim, I mean, these are like really good people. I mean, that, my, my tire went bad on my car, my brakes went bad on my car, and this dude, back hurt, can't do anything. What does Heather do? She calls him up and he comes and fix my truck. Why? Because she loves Heather. I know that. Heather told her I was good, so that means I must be a good person as far as they were concerned. They would drop a hat for anything, and so I know that's where Heather got it from, was from her parents. Just, I would ask any of you, take time for the next few days, for the rest of your life, and please just reach out your hand to somebody you don't know. Touch them, tell them thank you, tell them hi. Um, you do something that I, did the other day just thinking about Heather. I was in McDonald's drive through and I told him that I'm paying for the lunch for the people behind me. I don't know who it was behind me, but I just knew Heather would care enough to sit there and she just helped everybody. So maybe do something as simple as that, buy the lunch for the next person behind you. Don't acknowledge it because then you're trying to take credit for it, and that's something Heather never did. She never sat there and took credit for what she did good. She just did it, because it's supposed to be. Thank you. Um, next, we have Heather's mother.
but I will be all right. My child's famous Facebook post was, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. She paid attention. She made a lot of us pay attention. Oh my gosh, dinner with her, we knew it was going to be an ordeal of listening <laughs> and conversation and perhaps disagreement, but it was going to happen. And so um, my husband would say, okay, I'm going to go out in the car and play on my video game for a while. And we would sit in wood grill and she and I would talk and I would listen and we would negotiate and I would listen. And we talked about all the stuff. We talked about politics. We talked about um, anything that caught her eye that she felt was fair, unfair. She'd talk about her feelings about the office and how things were going. I mean, she just talked. The girl loved to talk. And she was single, so there was nobody listening at home. So mama got a lot of it. <laughs> and that was wonderful. You never think you're going to bury your child. You never think to take those pictures. They asked me for pictures for this, and I struggled. I had pictures from her childhood, but I had to go to Facebook to find pictures of my child because we were always together. I saw her a couple times a month at least, and we would text each other fairly often, and we would Facebook message at bedtime, I love you, I love you, you doing okay? Yep, I love you. So I have no regrets on that part. Take pictures of the ones that you love because you don't know when they're not going to be there. But here's what I want to say to you today. This could be a storm in a teacup and it could all be for nothing. This could I could have said, Let, let's don't do this publicly. Let's have a small private funeral. But, you know, that's not who Heather was. Anybody who knew Heather said, yep, this is the way she had to go, big and large. Had to have the world involved because that's my child. She's just that way. Always has been and she will continue to be. Because here's the message. Although Heather was a caring and compassionate person, so are a lot of you. A lot of you go that extra mile. And I think the reason that what happened to Heather has struck a chord is because we know that what she did is achievable. We don't all have to die. We don't all have to sacrifice our lives. They tried to kill my child to shut her up. Well, guess what? You just magnified her. what I want to happen. You ask me, what can I do? So many caring people. Pages of pages of pages of stuff I'm going through. I'm reading pages of pages of pages how she's touching the world. I want this to spread. I don't want this to die. This is just the beginning of Heather's legacy. This is not the end of Heather's legacy. You need to find in your heart that small spark of accountability. What is there that I can do to make the world a better place? What injustice do I see and want to turn away? I don't, I don't really want to get involved in that. I don't want to speak up. They'll be annoyed with me. My boss might think less of me. I don't care. You poke that finger at yourself like Heather would have done and you make it happen. You take that extra step. You find a way to make a difference in the world. My child had a high school education. My child was no saint. She was hard to raise because everything was a negotiation. <laughs> not, not kidding, but <laughs> you know what? She was a firm believer in whatever she believed and let's do that. Let's find that spark of conviction Let's find in ourselves that action. Let's spread this. Let's have the uncomfortable dialogue. It ain't easy sitting down and saying, well, why are you upset? It ain't easy sitting down going, yeah, well, I think this way, and I don't agree with you. 
but I'm going to respectfully listen to what you have to say. We're not going to sit around and shake hands and go kumbaya, and, and I'm sorry, it's not all about forgiveness. I know that that's not a popular trend. But the truth is, we are going to have our differences. We are going to be angry with each other. But let's channel that anger not into hate, not into violence, not into fear, but let's channel that difference, that anger, into righteous action. Right now, down the road, there's a blood drive going on in Heather's name. Right now, there are people who are here willing to listen to one another and talk to one another. Last night in New England, they had a peaceful rally in Heather's name to have some difficult dialogues. If you ever want to see what one of those dialogues look like, look at her Facebook post. I'm telling you, they were rough sometimes, but they were dialogues, and the conversations have to happen. That's the only way we're going to carry Heather's spark through. So remember in your heart, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention, and I want you to pay attention, find what's wrong, don't ignore it, don't look the other way. You make a point to look at it, and say to yourself, what can I do to make a difference? And that's how you're going to make my child's death worthwhile. I'd rather have my child, but by golly, if I got to give her up, we're going to make it count. How befitting to have the song Amazing Grace to be sung. This is a song that was written by John Newton, but my understanding also is that it was moaned in the belly of a slave ship that was owned by John Newton, seeing the intermixing of the, the good things, the hard things that come together and can make something as beautiful as Amazing Grace. So you're going to hear some sounds. Some of you just imagine yourself in the, on that ship. The things that are going and happening right now. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. I see through many dangers 
toils and snares I have already come T'was grace that brought me safe thus far And grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh man. Hallelujah, amen. To the bereaved family and to all the friends who are assembled here, there is a verse that appears in the 90th Psalm, verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This particular psalm is ascribed to Moses. It is identified as the prayer of Moses. And it's obvious from the prayer that it was a quest, or maybe I should say a request, to ask God for some assistance and help to live. It was not just for Moses himself, but it was for the people of Israel. But what's interesting about this particular psalm, and is the focus of my words today as we celebrate the life of Heather, is the fact that he says to God, teach us. Instruct us, educate us, inform us, give us knowledge to number our days. Now, the Hebrew word for the, for the word number does not mean to count, but rather to make each day that you live count. In other words, you need to learn how to get the most out of your life. See, a lot of times we determine a full life by the number of years that you live. But I want you to know it's not how long you live. It's what you do with the days you have to live. Because the the object is to get the most out of each day because each day that God gives you is a blessing each day is a gift but this word number seems to suggest to be counted or to make yourself accountable it is to be able to acknowledge and one of the things I want to suggest about Heather is this 
That is that she had some values that enabled her to make each day count. You see, I don't want to rust out in life. I want to wear out in life. And the way I want to wear out in life is by giving my life to a cause or for a reason that enables me to make a difference in somebody else's life. Because what I've learned in the 65 years and a few months of my living is this, is that it's not how long, it's what you do while you live. And so for me, as you live your days, as you reflect, as you commemorate, as you celebrate her life, then you need to learn from her. And that is, make each day count because she lived her life supporting and believing and having a value that enabled her to fight for justice and righteousness. Now, as I think about some of the things we could do, and I know this has been a heavy blow to our community. And yes, haters have been here. Yes, they don't ought not, we don't want them here. But we need to take a higher road. And we need to let them know that the three lives that were lost this weekend will not be in vain. And one of the ways you can make them not be in vain is to make sure that you do use your life and get the most out of it by touching another life. Well, how do you touch another life? Wouldn't it be wonderful in, in the Charlottesville, Albemarle County area that if each one of us adopted a child who cannot read and that if we made sure that child was on read grading, read grading, grading re on the level, the right level of reading, <laughs> was on grade reading level, in this community, you would have a child, there wouldn't be a child in this community who could not read. And don't you know it would say this about Heather's life? That just as she didn't waste hers, we didn't waste ours. And so for me, I want to get the most out of my life. And one of the things I want to make sure of is that my living is not in vain. The songwriter said it best, that if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can show somebody they are traveling wrong, if I can teach somebody, then my living shall not be in vain. What will you do with the rest of the days of your life? Will you make a difference in someone's life? Because the bottom line is you have to decide that either you will rust out or wear out. Let us pray. And now, God, our Father, we thank you for the life of Heather. We thank you for her mom, her father, her stepfather. We thank you for her brother, sister-in-law. We thank you for her grandparents. We thank you for everyone who has instilled values in her life. Now, Lord, I pray that you would bless the family, affirm their faith and trust in thee, but above all, remind us that you doeth all things well. Now keep them and bless them. In the name of Jesus, our Christ and soon coming King, we do pray. And all the people gathered here said, amen. I need to ask that everybody would remain seated until the family has exited from the auditorium. The morticians are in charge.
Say, ma'am, would you please take your seat? Hold it, hold it. Please be quiet. Please sit down. Ma'am, would you please take your seat? Would you please take your seat? Officer, oh, thank you. After the family, we'll let the governor, lieutenant governor, and the attorney general and their staff be dismissed too. And now may the grace of God, our Heavenly Father, may the love of His Son, Jesus the Christ, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now, and forevermore. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you.